Erica, the 69-year-old father was killed. His wife and one of his daughters also shot. They are expected to be okay. The violence coming after an apparent dispute about the living arrangements here. It's a real tragedy in the city of Fall River. At this home on Bank Street, gunfire erupted around 3 this morning. Police responded after a woman from inside called 911, reporting that her fiancé was shooting. Call taker stated that they could hear screaming in the background. The DA's office says 25-year-old Christopher Jean-Baptiste shot his fiancé's father, mother, and sister. The two women are expected to survive, but the 69-year-old father was killed. The shooter then turned the gun on himself. For something to happen like that right next door to you and it's it's pretty scary. Investigators learned the shooting happened after Baptiste, armed with a handgun, demanded the family leave immediately after staying at the home for several months. The father got into a physical fight with Baptiste when he was shot. This afternoon, investigators returned to the home, carrying out what appear to be personal items and belongings, including a handbag. It's just a horrible tragedy for that family, and I, I pray for them, and I hope everything works out for the young lady that was left behind and uh, their relatives and family. The DA's office says that Jean Baptiste had a license to carry that firearm. Fall River police tell us they had not made any calls or responded to this home uh, until this morning's shootings. Live in Fall River, Sarah Conji, WCVB News Center. Yeah, I know. Uh, but you can too. Why would this woman do that? On Wednesday morning, a Fall River man shot and killed his fiancé's father, wounded two women before turning the gun on himself in a shootout Wednesday morning, authorities said. Police received a 911 call from the shooter's fiancé saying he had just shot two of her family members and then himself at her home on 511 Bank Street. The county district attorney, Bristol, Bristol District, Attorney Thomas Quinn said the shooter, 25-year-old Christopher Jean Baptiste, was taken to St. Anne's Hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The fiancé's father, Herbert Labasquin, 69, was taken to Rhode Island Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The fiancé's mother, a 59-year-old and a 25-year-old sister were taken to St. Luke's Hospital. The women are expected to survive, authorities said. Authorities allege that the fiancé's family had been living with the couple at Baptiste Bank Street residence for the past several months, while they apparently looked for another place to live. Christopher Jean Baptiste was tired of his in-laws living with him. He told his fiance Tuesday night that he was not happy with the family continuing to live with them. Hours later, while he was holding a firearm, Jean Baptiste apparently told his fiance that his family had to leave the house immediately. Labasquin apparently engaged in a physical struggle with Christopher, at which time Labasquin was shot. As the fiancé called 911, Christopher Jean Baptiste apparently shot her mother and her sister before killing himself in the incident. The incident remains under investigation. Officials said there is an ongoing investigation and there is no threat to the public. Now, it's unclear exactly how long the, the fiancé's family had been living with them. But, you know, this time of year, in the holidays, when things are stressful as it is, and in this city alone as it is, landlords are just going sky high with the rents. You know, and people are having a hard time working and they can't afford, the, you know, the apartments that they're living in. And then you add into the fact that you got 
a father-in-law, a mother-in-law, and a sister staying with the couple. It's unsure whether the couple had children or not. But during the holidays, you know, it adds to a stressful time. People are worried about bills and, and you know, working. And, you know, after the past couple of years we just had with people working and COVID being around, things are not stable. You know, and to have a family living with you and your fiance and you being the odd man out, you know, it's, it's you got to feel like every argument, every every little problem you're being ganged up on, you know. You got your fiance living there with her family. So every time you argue with her, they're taking her back and... You know, the stress is just building up. And who knows how long this has been going on, right? How long, you know, they've been actually staying there. And, you know, if they were really looking, who knows if they were contributing to the bills. But apparently he was tired of it, you know. And it was probably running the toll on his relationship. And he snapped. And when he asked them to leave and said they had to leave now, yeah, 3 o'clock in the morning is... Is kind of hard to make someone leave, right? But, you know, if they're arguing all that night and, you know, him and his girlfriend are arguing about it and they're buttoning and stuff and he's just, listen, I want you out now, you know, the father in laws are to stand up and, you know, who you, don't be talking to my daughter like that and you're not going to be telling my wife this and, you know, he was he was licensed to carry the gun. You know, so they, they must have known he had a weapon. And I'm sure if he was, you know, stressed and he had the weapon on him and they know he had the gun, you, you, you defuse it. But this father-in-law, you know, started an altercation with him when he asked him to leave. You know, they could have just went to a hotel for the night and let things boil over and they wouldn't be in this situation. But the father-in-law didn't like the tone that he was taking. Started a physical fight. Now he's dead. The mother and the sister. They've both been shot. And expected to live. Then the poor guy turns the gun on himself and kills himself. So now you have a fiancé left with no... No boyfriend. No father. Her mother and her sister in the hospital... They're going to have PTSD and blame her for years that the father's now dead and that they, you know, they're going to deal with complications due to being shot. And every year over the holidays now, a couple of weeks before Christmas, it's going to be a memorial that's just going to be unbearable. Who knows if this is going to rip the family apart. You know, I'm sure police are going to do their investigation and see uh, how things really transpired. I don't think there'll be any more charges. Now this this poor girl, she's got a she's got to plan two funerals, one of her fathers and another one of her fiance. Tragic, tragic situation. You know, let's take this as a uh, as a lesson, people. That especially this time of year, when you know someone has a, a a gun, a weapon, and they have a license to carry at that, there's always a, an option. There's always a way to defuse it. You know, if it's his apartment and he wants us to leave, just leave. You know, um. The family could have just left. Like I said, went to a hotel. And maybe at 3 in the morning they thought it was irrational. And, you know, who knows how what really happened there, right? The fact of the matter is, is it, hit, it is his apartment. And if he asked them to leave, they should have all left. Because they didn't and the father started a fight with him. Now they're both dead. 
and there's family members in the hospital, and this poor girl's left to grieve alone, living in an apartment where her father and her boyfriend were just killed inside the apartment. Tragic, tragic. Let's take this as a lesson, people. It's your boy, Big Will, wife out of prison. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.